<laughs> Moja Love. You know those shows that take us back 10 <laughs> steps, dog? What about Moja Love? Yeah, that Uya Jola show. That shit is a bad idea. Why? What? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay. It's going to end badly. If it's the truth. I don't know. After that article came out saying that they actually lied. No, I think lied. the first episode was a lie, but after that it was... Yeah, was but, you, you know, let me put it to you this way. I know some neighborhoods where if these guys had to rock up and be like, yo, MacGyver is cheating on, on so-and-so with Waras. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Except mm. Waras is dead by the next day. Because MacIver knows the other neighbors there by Mai Mai mm. and the hostel that are going to take me out. Mm. You know what I mean? Which hoods are these? To any hood. Go to any colored hood in Johannesburg. Mm. Go to the Cape Flats and go try that stuff. They, that's where the murder rate is the highest. Where I think born? second only to Honduras or something. <laughs> the place is like a fucking war zone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, Eldos. Yeah. People are rough. You know what I'm saying? And also, like... Different ethnic groups have different propensity for violence. Yeah. And I'm saying, not every man that's cheated on, or woman that's cheated on for that matter, is just going to be like, hey, thanks, Jub Jub, for revealing the truth, man. Cheers. Yeah, I'm saying, after that, you're going to be like, oh, so you were cheating on me. Okay, no problem. Maybe that's why there's no colors on your jewelry. Line, yeah, oh, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I, once upon a time, I thought there'd be like an essay version of cheaters. Yeah. But then I thought, okay, this would be a bad idea because I know... How colored people behave. You know what I'm saying? That's why I've unsubscribed from being colored. I've retired. I'm no longer colored. What are you doing? Let me put my phone. Wait, so let me tell my wife I'm on a podcast. Yeah. I'm married. Does she know Babe, me? I'm on a podcast, so I won't be able to answer my phone for the next hour. Yes. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Hinda, what do you mean, hey, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to it. It's been a long time coming. Yes. Di Majerone. <laughs> hey, you taking me back, bro? Huh? You taking me back? Those, those, that was our heyday, Makaiva and I. You know, I was telling people the other day the story about you got me into anal. I got you into anal. Yes. What the venue? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> did I get you into anal or did I let you into anal? <laughs> <laughs> no, remember, uh, I was doing the show after you, and yes. I'd never tried anal. And you're like, no, dude, you gotta try it. Women yeah, love but that you gotta, shit. You gotta experiment, you know what I'm saying? You gotta like, be serious? sexual. Women love that shit. How what many times mean? have you done it? Since that day. Yes. Quite often. Nah, maybe three times. <laughs> 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 that day was like nine years ago. <laughs> So, just to say the record, he's not really into it, but he experimented. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good stance to take for everything, even if it's drugs. This is like, oh, you know, I did that. Yo, man, you put me on this cocaine thing. <laughs> How many times have you done? Three times in nine years. Oh, glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> but anyway, a lot of people made me aware that every time I start an interview, I'm always like, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. But really, we have been yes, trying we to have. do this. And you know, the thing is, I know you had more important people than me that you <laughs> needed to put in the front in the queue. So oh, I, gentlemen, I waited DJ, my turn. This is DJ Waras, by the way. Yes, MacIva and I, for those of you who don't know, we came up together at YFM. So he, you started your career at Y. You were there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't on like some community station bullshit. Oh, no, I was, I was. Before that? Yeah. Where? Uh, Gandhi Square, JBCCR. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds cuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got on Y. And you were doing, when he did 3 to 6 a.m., you left 3 to 6 a.m., I took over 3 to 6 a.m., remember? Yes. And you were doing 12 to 3 when I was I doing was doing 12 to 3. That's when you tell me about anal. And I, that's it. <laughs> you see, I was doing the late night luck. He was doing the morning glory. And I just remember, I remember Di Yeah. And I remember the top five ringtones at five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those days, people used to download <laughs> ringtones on their D500s. <laughs> What did you yeah. think of me when you first saw me? Because I know you're a very good judge of character. I thought you were an idiot. I also thought you didn't bath. You also never brushed your hair. You just looked like a slutu, like a squatin. <laughs> and I was like, what a dirty fellow. Because he doesn't look like that on crazy. Because he was also on crazy, you know? Yeah. And also, you look like a big 12-year-old. You still look like a big 12-year-old. It's like a MacGyver's never like... He's never becoming a man. He's just an eternal boy. <laughs> How old are you? Are you like 20? 32. Never. <laughs> you should never say he's 32. I'm 32. Yeah. But I look like a Bali. You, know, <laughs> you look like a lighty. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I like you. You and I, we just hit it off. Yeah, eh? we I did, think eh? because we liked a lot of the same shit. Mm -hmm. And also, we were the two, myself, you, and Mo Flavor, we were the three most talented 
radio DJs under the age of 25 yeah. to hit that station, I think, ever. You know mm. what I'm saying? And ever? to this day... I don't day, know about ever, bruh. I think, well, if I'm saying under 25, oh, I think that's very okay, important. Okay, because, okay, okay. you know, a lot of the guys, the legends, the legends are legends, yeah. but they got on, like, in their mid to late 20s. You know what I'm saying? I think Fat Joe did breakfast when he was 26, 25. You see? Fresh as well. Yeah. Fresh when Tato and Tato in the morning, he was already in his late 20s. They'd also, like, paid their dues. They had other platforms that they were on before they got there. You know what I'm saying? Whereas I we kind of, like... Well, for me, especially, I was like thrown in the fire at the age of 19. Yeah, they I were like, yo, you've got a show now. Yeah, how did you get into radio? Because when I first heard of you, you were like a drug dealer or something, man. No, I wasn't. I was a thug, <laughs> but then I reformed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was, what was I doing before? <laughs> you were drug dealers. We're not all drug dealers, bro. <laughs> and I don't speak of Afrikaans. <laughs> No, I was working, right? <coughs> I had some cock jobs. Mm. So I was a student. I went to varsity. I studied BCom investment management. Okay. I wanted to be a stockbroker. That okay. was the big dream. But I was poor. I came from Freight. I have no dad. My mom was middle class. Mm. So most of the money I made, I had to like, work and make that money. Is this and when you're a student? No, this is here when I moved here. Oh, so so then I, I matriculated and I came here. Oh. Um, okay. So I went to what is called Freight. Matriculated, I like I did the whole holidays in Durban. I was actually supposed to go to UKZN, and then for some other reason, I wasn't accepted at UKZN on some technicality, and I found this out like last minute. But I was also accepted at Vits. I was accepted at Rao, which was UJ was called before back in apartheid. <laughs> and I jumped on a Greyhound bus. I came to Joburg and I registered at Rao the next morning. Mm -hmm. So that was my journey, and then I got like really. You know those jobs when you're a student, you just have to take. I worked at Stutterfords, Stutterfords. at the fragrance counter. I always smelled good. Mm. Free perfume. I worked with the colored guy there at the fragrance counter. I think that bra still works there. <laughs> <laughs> in it for the long haul. <laughs> 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 then I worked. At, I worked at Greyhound in the call center. Greyhound. Greyhound bus stop. Yeah. I got fired from Greyhound because Why? a bus driver died midway between here and Durban. And, and then it was our fault. Oh. Well, it wasn't. I was supervisor at the time. Supervisor. I had never handled a situation where a bus driver died. Mm. And I mean, it's this shit was unprecedented. Yeah, yeah. And he died. Like, w it was a weird. It's tragic, but it's, also, it's you know, it's funny. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was winter. This guy was halfway between here and Durban with the bus. You know, they stop at Montrose, which yes. is like where the meal stop is. Yes, yes. And he was an alcoholic. And it caught up with him that night on that day. You know, mm. he could have died any other time. But he went to toilet. He sat down in the toilet and he had a heart attack. Wow. So now the passengers of the bus were locked out the bus. You know, that everyone went off like to go and eat. Yeah. And now half an hour, an hour, they're like, yo, where's this nigga, dog? And it's like two o'clock in the morning. Can't find this guy. Everyone's looking for him high and low. They're phoning the call center like, this is ridiculous. We've been here for two <laughs> hours. It's freezing cold. And you're the supervisor? No, I wasn't. I was just, I was just in the team, you know? Yeah. So we're all trying to get a hold of this driver. Yeah. We're phoning his cell phone. We're all handling the call volumes coming in from this bus full of people. Long story short, somebody had the presence of mind to go look for the dude in the toilet. They saw his pants and his shoes there under the door. Yeah. Man was dead. Wow. Mid taking a cock. <laughs> It's a cock one. <laughs> so, hit us back. They're like, yo, this nigga's dead. We're like, what? You know, like, what do you do now? And mm. then my supervisor was on duty at the time. He obviously had not dealt with a situation like this. Yeah. So, it took us another hour to actually solve this thing. We had to send another driver from Joburg to Midway Point to drive those passengers on, on their journey. And obviously, we had to handle this nigga and get him into an ambulance. Yeah, culture. that's so crazy. So it was just man. like, it was bad. Anyway, I got fired mm. out of Greyhound. Then I worked at Vodashop. I was the guy I used to do uh, upgrades and contracts there. I used uh. to dye my hair blonde. I really just wanted to rap bitches the whole day. <laughs> like, we were, we were a conglomerate of very good-looking colored boys okay. at this Vodashop Cresta. Yeah. And I think the owners of Photoshop, Krista and Westgate had cottoned on to the fact that a lot of people come here and if we use attractive boys as They're our, you know what I'm yeah, saying, yeah. cats are going to take contracts and upgrades. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
just seemed like they had an alarming amount of attractive colored boys. Yeah. Me included. That was the criteria. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the pays used to pull into the voter shop <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so I met a lot of pays at voter shop. Yeah. But in those times, I've never had more disposable income in my life. Mm. I always had money when I worked those weekends. Yes. Jobs. You know, I had money to pay towards my fees. I was in a McDonald's advert as well. You in McDonald's? Dog, that thing Shit. paid for my whole second and third year. Fuck me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was just some dumb nigga like, yo, I'm buying lunch. Steve or some shit. I don't know what my... Oh, can you still find this ad, bro? Probably not. <laughs> I think it went... Like, at the time that this ad was on, Junior Cheeseburgers were new. And Ronald McDonald and Hamburglar were still... You remember they had characters yeah. once upon a yeah. time? Then I think it just became very... Racist. How the hell did you get so that gig? Were you in an agency or they just I was, I was. Yes, I had an agency. It was my first casting I ever went for. I got it. Fuck what? I never ever got a casting after that. I went for casting after casting and I got no job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the first TV audition I went for was Live Amp. Yeah. And I got it. Yeah. The first radio audition I went for was YFM. And I got it. Just I've been lucky, I suppose. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, dude. Because I know people stand in line for hours <laughs> at those calls. You know nothing about and that. And never get chosen. I don't know anything about that, though. Okay, so now... Even my auditions, they were like, you know, yo, nigga, pull in. Away, I'm coming. I came there, I said, what kind, what kind? Got the job. Connections. See, that's what, that's what happens when you look good. You see, some you of us. Check. <laughs> that's it now. Some of you guys, <laughs> we look at you, we see, oh, this one from <laughs> Vendor. <laughs> uh, so, where did you get fired from Photoshop, then? Did you even get fired? From Photoshop? Mm. Oh, I thought you said Photoshop. No, 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 Photoshop. Um, did I? Yes, I did get fired. Okay. I did get fired in the end. Ah, uh, there was like restructuring, man, and there was new managers. New, and better looking colored. <laughs> no, 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 no. They got worse. They started <laughs> hiring. They started hiring older people for some reason. Yeah. Um, and also like you know you you see. It's not that, it's like I, because I wasn't the one doing the hiring. Mm. You know, I don't know what was the reason for why they started hiring the people they did, but I know one of the reasons was that we were part time employees. So we c technically worked shifts. So like six of us would work on weekends and the other six would work Monday to Wednesday and then the other six would work Thursday to Saturday, mm. kind of part-time employees. Mm. Um, and then the guys that were joining were permanent employees. They were working Monday to Sunday. Mm. So I think that worked out better for the company and then we had to make space, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I see. Uh, but then uh, anyway, I finished studying. I moved on with my life. And when did you stop being a thug then? I've never stopped being a thug. I'm still a thug. I'm a thug <laughs> hey, today. Hey, you know hey, what I'm saying? Hey, Fuck with me. Thug life. <laughs> I'm going to go take the thug life on my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's my journey. And then, yeah, why have him? To get back to your question. Sorry, I talk a lot. Now, this is a podcast. This yeah. shit can be. No, we got all the time yeah. in the world, bro. There's no ads here. <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> so, I got the call. I was sitting at my job. At uh, an accounting firm. Jeez, now you're at an accounting firm. Yeah, Fuck bruh. me. What I was in an accounting firm. Uh, but my like job there was actually... Huh? Yeah, my jo it was, a, it was a, an accounting software firm. Mm. And my job there was like... I, sh I didn't like it. I had to sit at the desk the whole day. I had to work through these long lists of data. And I had to... Like it was... You know, it was killing my soul. And I could have stayed there. And I could have kind of pursued the degree direction, mm. and, you know, like gone on and done all the other stuff I needed to do to qualify as a stockbroker one day and then work long hours looking at numbers. I don't know. You know, I, I didn't become one, so I don't know what they do. Mm. But I imagined if I've got to be office based and I've got to do this thing where I wear a shirt and a tie and formal pants yeah. and no one has died. You know, it's not a funeral. <laughs> it's not summers. Yeah. It's not a wedding. I've just got to wear this shit every day. It made me, it, like it was driving me mad. Mm. I couldn't do it. And then when I got the call from Vugile Zondi, mm. he was like, yo, we're looking for a colored guy who can speak Zulu here at YFM. Hmm. I said, wonderful. Let me pull in. And he was like, you know, is it something that you'd consider? And I was like, fuck it. Let me try it. You know what I'm saying? Vugile, by the way, was our program manager yes, at, the time. at the time. How did you meet Vugile? I went to varsity with Vugile. Oh, yeah, so that's how he knew you. Bcom Law, oh. and I was doing Bcom Investment Management. We had a few classes together, but we were in the same scheme of And class, you guys you know? vibed, yeah. And we vibed, you okay. know what I'm saying? And, he, well, he went on to become the programs manager at YFM, and I think when he had this need for a colored guy who could speak Zulu, 
having lost the other guy, who, colored guy who could speak Zulu. Trevor he was Noah. Like, Trevor Noah. Yeah. He was like, yo, I know this guy I went to varsity with, you know? Yeah. And he obviously saw So what, YFM has me. to have a colored guy who speaks Zulu? No, like, I think <laughs> they were just trying to sort of like, at the time, Trevor Noah wasn't the Trevor Noah he is yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was just a colored guy who could speak Zulu. <laughs> so the notion that he could replace him <laughs> with another colored guy who could speak Zulu is not far-fetched. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now, if, God forbid, he loses his job in the Daily Show, <laughs> they can't just put out a brief and say, we're looking for a colored old who can speak Zulu. You know what I'm saying? YFM, Daily Show, you know what I'm saying? So let's 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 think of yeah. Trevor Noah in his 2008 context. You know, <laughs> yes. he had like these shitty cornrows in his YFM uh, publicity picture. He had on a white vest and a white pants. Yeah, probably white shoes as well. You yeah. know, judging by the, the way the outfit was going, <laughs> he was probably wearing white to white to white. Yeah, with like a denim jacket or some shit. You yeah. know, like. He, he just looked like a dork. Yeah, I don't but remember. This was that a picture. long time ago. There were pictures that were up on the Rosebank side. Oh, yeah. You the remember Rosebank in the office side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't notice him either. I, I, only, know, yeah. I only stumbled upon the picture of him like six months later. Yeah. And I think at that stage, maybe just a little bit before, or maybe a little bit after, he was doing the SARS adverts. Remember, oh, he was yeah, the yeah, SARS yeah. guy. That's when he left Radio Computer. That's it. Yeah. You see. Yeah. So, and then he went on to do the Cell C stuff. Yeah. Remember, he was the Cell C guy. Yeah. So, he kind of went from string to string in his own lane. Yeah. I okay. don't think he lost anything by, Let's by leaving Let's go to Vox now. So Vox yeah. calls you. So Vox calls me. He's like, yo, pull in. He's like, you need to record a demo. If we like the demo, the job starts on Saturday. Okay. This was a Wednesday. And you got no intention, no aspirations to be on radio this no. time? No. I was wow. literally just looking for something outside of what, other than what I was doing because I was not happy wow. with the office-based wow. environment. So I get in. I meet Monday. Fucking legend. You yeah. know, like... The late great. Dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of the time when people die, I always think... Why couldn't someone else die? Mm. You know, like, we lose the wrong ones. Fuck. Anyway, Monday's like, I'll help you. Because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the first thing Monday picked up is that I didn't know how to run a desk. Yeah. And he picked up on it. He never said anything about it. But because we just vibed and we clicked. Yeah. Long story short, I recorded the demo. I think even if the demo was kak or good, didn't matter. They just needed a colored guy who could speak Zulu. <laughs> I got the job. <laughs> Saturday morning, I started my show. I did a link for like 17 minutes. Wow! Because I didn't you know. you Dude. 17! 17. 17. I didn't know what button to press. But that's coming out. Yeah. You check. To play a fucking song. And Monday was leaving the bank. Yeah. He jumped in his car. He heard me talking. <laughs> he, was, he says he was driving down Jan Smuts. But because I was still talking, he was like, this nigga doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Slow, no. He hit a U-turn. He came to the studio, which was in the zone at Rosebank. He walked into the studio. I was still talking. And then he like, beep, he pressed the thing and played a song. He's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? I was like, I don't know what button to press. So, from that moment on, that guy was my guy. You know what I'm saying? That was my oak. So if it wasn't for Monday, if you wasn't for Monday, I was going to talk the whole fucking morning. I didn't know. I tried everything. I pressed all the fucking buttons. The song wasn't starting. Remember that old white disc? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> boss. There was like a setting. Remember you could play on air, off air. So the buttons, the way it's set up, you've got a red button for on air and a green button for off air. And the songs, obviously the computer is in tune with this desk, right? And now, if you press the red button, it means play. It's the equivalent of pressing play on a mouse. <laughs> Which we also had the option to use. <laughs> but remember, like, people would come into the studio and fuck shit up. So the mouse wasn't anywhere I could reach it. Oh, God. I say, Monday came, he just said, pop, pop. <laughs> it's like, are you cool? So I said, no, I'm not when cool. you get to Mo why, um, who's there? Mo Flavor's there. Who else Mo Flavor there? was there. I think at that stage, Mo was doing the Urban Express. Yeah. I loved Mo. I thought Mo was brilliant in yeah. my listening to why. Tolly B was there. Tolly B was there also. What a boss. Yeah. Um, you were there, yeah. but you were doing? Uh, three to six. Three like to six said, yeah. weekdays. Yeah. yeah. Morning Glory. Yeah. Um, Chili M was doing Drive. With Dineo, essentially. With Dineo, yes. Mm. Uh, who did breakfast? Smoo did breakfast, unfinished did you, Apart from Smoo, did you know any of these guys? Because you don't come from a radio background. No, I, d I knew Smoo from yeah. On The Wildlands. Mm. I used to listen to it every day. It was mm. fucking hilarious. Mm. I don't think he repeated the same thing with Unfinished Business, but mm. I think he was a different guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But On The Wildlands was 
me and my friend used to record it with cassettes when I was still at Varsity. Me and, and Dolphin. Yeah. We used to record. Dolphin's also from Venda. Hence <laughs> his name is Dolphin. <laughs> Not even a name. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. we used to record it with cassettes and then get home like from class and listen to On the Wildlands. It mm. was just hilarious. I used so to I record uh, Tato to Tato. I knew Tato. I knew Fresh and yeah. I knew Tato and Tato in the morning because yeah. I used to listen to it when they were on. Yeah. I knew Fat Joe. Yeah. I knew Bad Boy T. I used to listen to Harambe, yeah. the Mad Off Hour. I was like a massive Mad Off Hour yeah. fan because I had like an interest in DJ. And all my friends, same guy, Dolphin, yeah. Andres, the guys that I lived in this commune with, like three of them were DJs. And they were friends with um, people like that I met before they were famous. Euphonic. I met Euphonic way before he was famous when he was still picking up pictures at Labori Village. Yeah. I met uh, Josi, Soul Kid. I met um, Webster. They were like a scheme. Frankie. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They were Pear. like a group of guys. Pear. Even Naves. Naves was still a squatter camp DJ. I didn't mm. meet, I didn't know Naves, but I knew these guys. Mm. And these guys were like super into DJing. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember Euphonic had an Audi, I think, an A3. Mm. The registration was Euphonic GP. <laughs> and he went to Mad Off Hour, and we were all listening. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was our dude, man. You know, yo, Timbers on it. Yeah. And he won Mad Off Hour, and it was like, fuck, he won Mad Off Hour, you know? Yeah. But when you think about the institution that was YFM, and the shows that were on it, shows like Harambe, mm. and then features that were on Harambe, like Mad Off Hour, DJ Cleo won Mad Half Hour. Euphonic won Kent. Mad Half Hour. Kent won Mad Half Hour. These guys went on to become big deals. Household names. You know what I'm saying? So, what the platform was then, what the platform is now, because now I don't know who the fuck won anything <laughs> then. <laughs> hey, do you even know the lineup right now? I no, I know the lineup. What's the lineup? What's the, what's the lineup? Sabi and Ankle Tap on the main shows. I don't know anyone outside <laughs> of it. I only know Sabi. <laughs> but I, I know them because they were there when I worked there. You know? yeah, yeah. Oh, and Kutso. Because yeah. she was there when I worked there. Yeah. I don't know the other members. Yeah. But I go there one, two times and I go give lectures there. Mm. Uh, to the Y Academy. Y Academy. Yeah. Um, but I just think, you know, they're playing in a different... The game has changed, you yeah. know. Okay, apart from YFM, what do you think of the state of radio right now? It's shit. Mm. It's shit across the board. That's what I was going to go on to say. Is that It's nobody's fault, you know. Um, I think that radio is in a, in a much more competitive market than it once was. So there's podcasts now. Yeah. There is internet. There's fiber. You know what I'm saying? Like we are we upping and we upping and we upping. And mm. we're getting to a point where we've got so many options. Radio isn't something that even fits onto our priority list mm. anymore. So... Mm. They're fighting against that. Then on top of that, they've also got this, this situation where I think people are just not interested anymore for other reasons. Mm. You know, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine who does events. Dolphin. Uh, not Dolphin. No, no. no fucking Povias. <laughs> What's your cousin's name? Your <laughs> Povias. <laughs> Povias is not even a name. <laughs> Two hours for this interview, bro. I wouldn't even ask you one question, bro. I right? didn't even talk to our dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> MacIver has a cousin named Bobias. What do you want to do, my friend, bro? Okay, anyway. Yeah. Yo, these lights are hot. Bro. Yeah, they are, they are, they are. You know? You haven't I've done TV in a while, I can tell. Bro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I've got tissue oil on my skin, you know, for my complexion. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I almost said Bobias. <laughs> Uh, so that's one. So much more competitive market, lots of other options for people to jump on. Yeah. I had this conversation with this event promoter friend of mine because you know I do security as, yeah. and, as well. So he was speaking about how the numbers have come down in terms of event attendance. Is it? Dude, big time. You kidding? You know, like in terms of festivals that we're doing, 20,000 yes, people two, yes. three years ago are struggling to hit five to eight. No way. Not all of them. Yeah, yeah. But you know where... If you, if you have a dope lineup, a massive stage, proper security, great production, um, an awesome venue, you know, you haven't even changed the venue, like you're using the same venue. All of, you've ticked all the boxes for this event that used to bring you 20,000 people. When you're doing all that same stuff, 
and you're getting 5,000 people. It's like, okay, what the fuck's happening? You mm. know, you haven't dropped the standard of your offering. Yes, yes. So why are people not coming? I think people are more inclined to do uh, experiences now. You know, like your four is farmer's market. That's, you know what, you, that's what white people say. <laughs> <laughs> when they're trying to justify why a budget should or shouldn't go your way. You know, they're just like, well, we're really more into experiential, you know. We're looking at the experiential market. That's such a broad state. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me ask you. Which, Let's not which, say that. Which, which festival would you want to go to? You don't do security. You just want us. Uh, well, because I do security, I don't want to go to any. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, you just no more colored guy who speaks Zulu. Which festival would you want to go to? That happens here. Yeah. I would go to... I would go to Major League Gardens. Okay, so you got a choice between yeah. Major League and going to Forest Farmers Markets. Which one would you go to? I'd go to Major League. Forest Farmers Markets is cuck. Mm. I'd go to for, I'd go to Major League. Yeah. I don't. You see that experiential nonsense. <laughs> I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I want that stuff, I will set aside a day and I'll go do that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying like, in terms of attending an event, you know, I've I've been to every major festival that we have here. Mm. Um. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I used to go to H2O, bro, like 10 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> like 12 years ago with all the whites there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me and my friends, we used to go there and it was fucking great. Mm. You know, we had the fucking most amazing time. Yeah. But now, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm older, but it can't be that because I've sort of, I've been the same age for a decade. You know, like I'm not your average guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, MacGyver's like a 32-year-old, 12-year-old. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't use myself as the typical example. Mm, because mm. I also like, when I go to those things, I know everyone. Everyone knows me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I land there, and I have a much easier time getting in and out. No one is trying to rape me or spike my drink. You know, yeah. those are also things that people consider when they go to festivals and stuff. Mm. Where it's like, I, I don't want to go because guys are heavy. That's a lot of girls tell me that, especially, again, we do security. Yeah. So you'd, it's alarming how many girls will come up to you at a festival and say, this guy is harassing us. You know, this guy won't leave us alone. Mm. Or this guy followed me and my friend to the bathroom. Or this. And you think to yourself, fuck, if this was my daughter or girlfriend or even just a friend or somebody I knew, and they were coming to an event and kind of, this is what's happening to them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I wouldn't know if it's a stranger. And also, the lineup is the same everywhere. It's if you go to Major League, you go to this other festival, it's the same but lineup. If I go to Major League and I see Ricky Rick there, mm. what's stopping me from seeing Ricky Rick somewhere else next weekend? Because you probably know he's all set. There we go. You see, so the, the artists have become more accessible. Mm. You see, they're not like exclusive anymore. Oh, yeah. As they once were. Remember, like, when international artists used to come here. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. We'd go because, crazy. Yes, because now when, when Post Malone comes, you're like, ah, now wait for the you next one. You understand? Yeah. Look, Post, Post Malone, Castle Lights has done an exception. No, I'm just trouble. giving you an example. Yeah, like, what I'm, not a big... There's war. a lot of people that have been brought by other festivals where I'm like, the fuck? You know, like, why that guy? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think that a lot of the time about Ultra. You know, like, in the, in the electronic dance music world, I feel like the lineup that they bring here I look at a lot of it and I'm like, mm, I wouldn't have brought those O's. Mm. You know, certainly not at that price. Yeah. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but anyway, listen, I've so got 15 minutes left with you, man. I was shocked. 15? Yeah. Jesus. I was okay. shocked. Uh, you talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're on radio. 17. <laughs> Where's Modern? <laughs> hey. Just saying. Yeah. Um, I was shocked you didn't make it on the list. What list? You know the list of... Hey, the doom list. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've smashed a lot of honeys, bro. I have, but clearly I've smashed them consensually. <laughs> never forced myself on anyone. I've never made anybody feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And do I was happy to not be on the list. Do you, do you know but can I condom, tell you bro? the honest truth about the list? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been surprised if I was on the list. Mm. I wouldn't have been surprised if you were on the list. Because I feel like the list started out as a good thing mm. and then it sort of it plateaued and then it just started coming down into like, okay, what's actually going on here? Yeah. That is my thing with the list. Yeah. You know, I it's think kinda like events. <laughs> but it's kind of yeah, it's fucking like everything. <laughs> Maybe it's Twitter's fault. <laughs> Look, this is my thing with the list. The gender based violence and sexual assaults of any kind, sexual arrest, these are serious problems. 
And I don't believe they're problems that can be tackled on Twitter. That's first of all. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like people, they put too much weight on this thing on Twitter where they were like, yeah, this is a fucking movement. We're fucking changing everything, boy. Let's go. <laughs> you know, it became a thing where everybody was outing everybody else. Yeah. And it became like a finger pointing thing and a name calling thing. And I was like, wait now, th we're losing the plot here. It all started with Uyinene, mm. to whom something atrocious was done. Mm. You know, this girl, she wasn't just raped. She was raped. She was bludgeoned to death. Her body was dumped. And all of this happened at the fucking post office. Mm. This is a fucking serious problem. But we're not looking at the problem. We're kind of targeting our anger, especially on social media, in the wrong direction. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, the first thing I said about the Uyinene thing is, when I found out that that nigga was an ex-con, I was like, how the fuck did he get a job at the post office? That's one. Mm. That guy should have not Red been working flag, at the yeah. post office. Red flag. How do we fix that system? Because clearly that system is broken. Secondly, why were, was he in the post office alone at any point? You know, how was it that he was able to do this? And there's no, like, I would like to think that the post office is safe. It's certainly where I go fetch my license disc. Post office I go to, there's cameras in that bitch. Everyone's behind a glass. You can't even access the people. When you get your package, they put it into something, then they push it across, then you must open on this side and take your package. It's so Santon, you, darling. You, no, this is not Santon, brother. This is Florida and the <laughs> West Strand. So it's not even, eh? <laughs> so you, all these questions came, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I was like, cool, it's not, a, you know, it's not an excuse for this oak's behavior. Mm. But I'm just saying, like, this oak was able to get away with what he got away with because the system allowed it. You know what I'm saying? He, he existed in a system where there were so many loopholes for him to be an evil cunt. And then the other thing that, that the movement, I think, started doing is that if you look at a lot of the stories that were coming out, they were all over the place. Yeah. And this page that was pro posting them was just posting whatever came its way. You know, and that's not fair. Mm. Because at some point, it becomes a character assassination against yeah. some guys who perhaps haven't done anything. Mm. I could have created a fake profile. And I could have gone there and put a picture of you and said, Makaiva Mukwebu fingered me. <laughs> Without my consent. I could have said anything. Yeah. Your name would have been there. Your face would have been there. And whatever handle I used would have been put up there. Yeah. You are fucked, my son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the court of public opinion, you are doomed. Mm. Kanti Waras is the one. I thought it's a joke. Then I send you the screenshots and I say, ha ha. But the damage is done. The damage is done. And it's not a fucking joking matter. It's mm. a serious problem that needs to be handled from a legislative and an institutional point of view all the way down. And I just think like we lost that messaging, which is like a lot of the time what happens with these campaigns that start on social media. We lose the messaging somewhere down the, the road. And the legitimate real victims People who are brutalized on a daily basis, people who are abused and have got no voice and can't say shit about it, those people get pushed to the back because mm -hmm. now we need to give these people who are talking about, ah, I don't like the way he looked at me. And when he looked at me, Fusak is MacGyver, this guy. He looks at women like they are meat. Speaking about violence, what happened with you and Mzegazeg? Me and Mzegazeg? Mm -hmm. Oh, DJ Spoo. Well, it wasn't really violence. Why would you... No, you know, in Reddit, they always say, speaking of... <laughs> okay, yeah, because I was like... Because when you said, speaking of violence, what happened with you and Mzega Zega? I was going to say, well, not really violence. What happened between me and Mzega Zega is I consume his music. I bought all his CDs, bro. I have his starter pack in my cell phone. <laughs> what happened? You know, really, they always say, speaking of... I have a not guilty overall at home. <laughs> What happened? I, I heard there was a, a, um, an altercation between you two. There was an altercation, I think, it was blown out of proportion. Okay. Um, what happened was, we were at the event at Major League Gardens, and the long story short of it is, Mzege Zege was kicked out of the event. Yeah. And he got into an argument with the security. With my company, but not me personally. Mm. Um, one of the guys that work for me and him were arguing, and his manager. I don't know who that guy was. And then also like the other people that happened to be at that gate. You know when there's too many people, people mm. add fuel to a fire mm. and that's how that thing got out of hand. And it became a physical fight between him and the guy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I just, what I didn't appreciate is like the way it was reported. Oh. It's like we jumped him and we moored him or something. Mm. That's not what happened. It was a short altercation between him and the security guy. Nobody really wins or loses those things. Everybody gets their good shots in, shots out. Mm. The thing gets stopped. It was squashed. Everybody separated. They left in their car. That oak went one side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the music continued. 
And the music, well, the event went on, nobody even knew about it. Yeah. You know, had it not been reported on and blown out of proportion, I think it would have just been the small thing that it was. Is there anyone else you've had a fallout with? In the industry? In the industry? Mm. No, nobody fucks with me, son. Yeah. You know, you don't story. take shit. I don't bro. take shit, eh? You're still I think a thug. That's thug life. An, an important thing is like, it's not to be a thug or be a bully. I personally, I hate bullies. I yeah. don't like it when no, people but you're are not bullies. A bully, I'm not a bully. Dude. You're just straightforward. You know what you I want. Am. And, the and you tell it like, like it is. I'm also very patient. Yeah. I'm a very patient guy. I get along with everybody. You know me. Mm. You know, we can have a laugh. I can diss you. You can diss me. Mm. There's almost nothing that you can really say that can make me aggressive, angry, mm. or violent. But what I don't agree with is like when people try to take you for a boost. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. And whoever that person is, yeah. you know, it can be... I have this chat with my girl about road rage. Yeah. You know, she's like the type of person who if somebody cuts her off, she's like, hoot. Yeah. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm like, calm down. I never do that stuff. Yeah. You can cut me off. You can literally stop in front of me for five minutes. I just wait until it's clear and I go. I don't even hoot. Mm. Because my thing is this. Let's say I hoot at you or you hoot at me. Right? Then I say Fusek. Then you say Fusek. Then I jump out. What are you going to do? Mm. Are you going to jump out? Because if you want to bang, you must know how to bang because I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That escalation, where does it end? Mm. And I don't understand why people get themselves into that thing where you, you actually just, you agitating yourself. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to be on the losing end. Mm. So that's why when it does come to a situation where I lose my temper or I have beef with someone, that person must really have How done something How many niggas have you fucked me. up? Gang. <laughs> You're fucking kidding me. Lots. And I've also been fucked up. My nose has been broken. I've broken my hand. I've been in, I've been hit with things that I don't even know who hit me with them. Yeah. I was looking at that story where Tira got hit with a beer or something. I was like, shit. In nigga, Venda. I've, I've been hit with a lot of beer. In Venda of all places. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the beer wasn't in a court. It was in a can. <laughs> 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 and they're like, Tira got hit with the beer and vendor. I was like, oh, that's not so bad. Wasn't it in a carton of juba? <laughs> that thing is soft. <laughs> and they're like a can. I was like, hmm, well, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So, Johnny, I'm 32 years old now. You mm. know what I'm saying? Most of it happened wow, in my so old, days. <laughs> you know, no, I'm saying like when I was a kid, bro. You know, like, now I, now I avoid trouble. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And obviously... When you're a public figure, you try to sort of, well, you try, try being the operative one. You try to lead by example. But we're human beings. You know, mm. I'm a human being. I say stuff, I do stuff that might piss people off. I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But fuck it, man. You still think you're, in the, uh, you're like a public figure? Because I haven't seen you like anywhere. Like well, I'm TV back on now. I have a job. I've been hired as the new drive time host of Kagasi FM. You I'm a boss again, man. You son. didn't drive? Yes, hey, I Kukasi. am. In fact, I'm announcing it on your phone Oh, no, it's my dog. Guess who called you? Who? Boogie Les <laughs> <laughs> I'm nice, actually, dog. I'm looking for a co-host. Are you keen? Hey? Fuck. Come I, work with me. I will get fired. <laughs> we'll get fired within a I'm week. Joking, you know, I'm bro. Joking. I'm doing the show with uh, oh, Nomalanga. You know Nomalanga? She's on BET. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we started. So, you're back, dog. I'm back, dog. I'm oh, back. my dog. I'm so proud Fuck of you, man. The thing is, I looked so at the game. So, what are they looking for? A colored guy who can speak Zulu? Pretty much. <laughs> for all your colored guy who can speak Zulu needs, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> no, they were actually, you see, with them, you see, Vukile and I have a very good relationship. Yes, yes. And, you know, like, when people are always, like, open up the industry, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's a separate conversation. But we have a very good relationship. Guy came to me and he said, look, this is what we're looking for. Mm. What do you think? Mm. He didn't come to me and say, hey, here's a job, take it or leave oh, it. Yeah, yeah. He was like, what do you think? Yeah. Then I said, well, this is where I see us excelling. You mm. know, this is what I see us doing and doing very well. And I would like to get, uh, get on it. Let's start doing it ASAP. And what are you offering? Mm. You know? To help this process. Not what are you offering, how much are you going to pay me? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because it's I feel like when that. you're working with management that gets it, it's then... It's smooth brother, sailing, smooth bro. Smooth sailing. Smooth. Smooth sailing. And of the other radio stations I've worked at before, that's been the fucking worst part, mm. is that you're working with management who does not get right. it. Yeah. Is that then why you, you left five saying, FM? Exactly. That's how I left five. That's how I le even why. Mm. We parted ways, not amicably, because it was a case of, ah, uh, you think you're a boss, fuck you. And I was like, oh, I am a boss lucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
the fuck? <laughs> it's not arrogant. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a case of understanding your value and your worth. Mm. And if I come and I, if you want me to do a show that's funny, that's informative, with nice stories, nice features, you know, I can do that. But if you come to me and you're like, yo, we need you to host a current affairs talk show for three hours, I'm going to tell you, except that's not my thing. Mm. I can speak on it for three minutes, and I've got opinions on a lot of current affairs issues, but I'm not Eusebius Makaiza. Mm. I'll say, go speak to Eusebius. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And I think Vukile gets that. Um, I've met the rest of the management it's team. Very they important. also get it. Yeah, very important. And Kakasi FM is huge. It's the biggest regional station in the country. Are you going to be uh, broadcasting from Joburg? I can broadcast from both. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Durban just mm. for the initial period so that I get used to the audience and the audience gets used to me. Mm. And then, uh, you know, at a later stage, that is actually also part of the planning. They've built a studio in Johannesburg. So oh, they're nice. encouraging us to broadcast from here. Mm. Nomalanga is also based here. She's on BET. Mm. So she also needs to be able to broadcast between... Johannesburg and Durban. Yeah. And I think it's dope, man. I'm looking forward to Durban. I want to go, you know, Do you remember the switch off the mic? Wash off the my parties. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now I'm a boss. Huh? <laughs> As I said earlier, <laughs> I'm not a boost anymore. <laughs> and then what happened with TV, bro? Why did you leave live, man? Because that's a good gig. Live? 